guys, this video is going to be about how to become a rad tech or a radiology technologist or a radiographer or an RT or an x-ray tech. Those are all of the names that you can call us. I made a video on the difference on the differences between x-ray techs and radiologists, which x-ray techs are what I am, and a radiologist is the doctor who reads the x-rays. So I just wanted to make a video kind of the, to help you understand a little bit better. It's going to go into more detail on how to actually become an x-ray tech. So I'm just going to focus on the x-ray tech. I'm not going to talk about the radiologist part. Taking x-rays is not just being a button pusher. You have to know how to position the patient correctly. You have to have patient care um, experience. So actual experience working with patients, you can't just learn everything out of a book. Also, when you go to school, you will learn that taking x-rays is not the only thing of a x-ray text job description. There's like a lot of different things that you have to do. It's not just taking x-rays. <laughs> but I don't want to scare you guys. I made it through and so can you. The very first step that you need to do if you want to become an x-ray tech is you have to complete all of the prerequisite courses that are required to be accepted into an x-ray tech program because you have to be in a specific x-ray tech program. Um, you can't just just go to college and like major in biology and get a bachelor's degree and then expect somebody to hire you to take x-rays. That's not how it works. You have to actually go to school and you have to learn how to take x-rays. Some of the classes that I had to take to make sure that I got into the program were like just college English, communications, basic math, so more like algebra, not calculus. You don't have to know calculus for um, being an x-ray tech. Psychology or sociology, arts and humanities classes, medical terminology, and especially, especially, especially anatomy and physiology. Like anatomy and physiology one and two, including the labs. I was an overachiever when I was in school. Um, I took chemistry and physics and biology and I didn't actually have to take those to get into the x-ray tech program. Um, however, because I had taken those before, um, and those are really hard classes. The x-ray tech program was not as hard for me as it was for like some people who hadn't taken it. So I don't think that you need to waste your money and your time taking those classes um, like in college. But if you have the chance to in high school, I would recommend definitely taking those types of classes just so that you like have a really good understanding a good basic understanding so then the x-ray tech program won't be so hard for you another thing you do not have to have a degree before you become an x-ray tech definitely have a high school diploma or a GED um, you don't have to have a bachelor's degree to get into the x-ray tech program because the x-ray tech program is normally either a certificate degree, an associate degree, or its own bachelor's degree. But the most common radiology technology degree is an associate's degree, and that's what I had. That's what I have. I don't have a bachelor's degree. I just have an associate's degree. So you can go immediately after um, you graduate from high school, just take the prerequisites and then try to get into the program. That's all that you really need to do. But make sure that you do your own research and talk with a counselor or the person in charge of the program to know exactly what's required because you might take the wrong classes and you may not be eligible to get into the program so that might delay you becoming an x-ray tech. A lot of the times they have information sessions for people who are interested in getting into the program. Definitely I would recommend doing an in info session to have a better understanding because you may go to the info session and they'll explain different things and then you will, you might be like oh this is not what I wanted so you get out before you even started so you don't have to quit in the middle of it if you really realize that this is not what you want. If you're really interested in looking into a program it's usually going to be at a community college or a private institution sort of like the Pima Medical Institute or universities some universities actually do give you a bachelor's degree some of them do give you an associate's degree and certain programs have a wait list while others are have a competitive point system 
I went to a community college with a competitive point system and that was by far the cheapest way to do it. That's the way that I would recommend. That, that should be your first choice to go to a cheap community college because you'll get way more bang for your buck. Once you are in the program, you have to study really hard to pass. So X-ray tech school, X-ray school is not a walk in the park, okay? You have to study really, really hard. You will learn more about radiation and radiography and imaging than you ever thought possible. For an associate degree, I'm just gonna talk about the associate degree because that's how I, like, that's the type of school that I went to and that's all I really know. I don't know what it's like to do a bachelor's degree. Once you get into the program, it's two continuous years of study. There's no summer breaks in between. So in my school, I think we started in January. The school was broken up into trimesters instead of semesters. Um, so trimester one was basically the spring semester of the school and then the second trimester was summer and then the third trimester was fall and then the fourth trimester was spring and then the fifth trimester was summer and then the sixth trimester was fall so in December we would graduate that's how my program was and there was no summer breaks or anything I think there were probably like two week breaks in between each trimester but yeah it was like it was grueling. <laughs> I think the good thing about that is uh, you didn't forget everything you learned in the middle of the summer, you know? So you just went all the way through without stopping, which helped you retain everything. So I think that's a good thing. So some of the classes that we took were radiographic positioning. So radiographic positioning is very, very important because you have to position the patient properly and know when they're like over rotate or un over rotated or under rotated or if you didn't center it correctly or something like that you have to know so that was a very important um, class we had to learn patient care principles of radiographic exposure radiation physics radiobiology and radiation protection pharmacology and drug administration advanced imaging which we learned kind of about the different um, things like ultrasound, MRI, nuke med, CT, mammography, DEXA, different things that we could learn after graduating. And then there's practicum or clinicals where you actually go to a hospital and work. They get free labor out of you. But you work as if you are an x-ray tech, but you are a student and you have help from all the x-ray techs at that hospital. Um, and they teach you all of their little tricks and everything, and um, that's where everything kind of clicks, where you actually understand what it's like to be an x-ray tech and um, get your actual real-life experience. So th that's like very, very, very important. And then we had a class at the very end called Registry Review. It's, entire, it's an entire class at the, um, in the last semester where we reviewed for that big registry. Once you're finished with your, with your school, schooling you take the registry and you have to pass the registry um, if you don't pass the first time you have two other chances to pass but if you don't pass then all of your school is for nothing um, because you can't be a registered x-ray tech so you won't be able to get a job so the big registry is it's called the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists ARRT registry exam. So this is a very very serious exam that you take at the very end. There's about 220 questions on the test and it's like a four-hour test but 20 of those questions don't really count. So it's basically 200 questions that actually count and you need to get a 75% or higher on the exam to pass the registry. I think most of the people in my class passed on their first try. You just have to remember everything you learned in the past two years of schooling. It's not too bad. I don't want to scare you guys. Once you pass the registry, you apply for a license in the state that you live in, and you usually don't need to do an extra test for that. You just have to prove to them that you took the registry and you passed the registry exam, and then they'll give you a license. It just takes kind of 
a couple of weeks or a month or something. And then once you are officially registered and licensed in your state, you can apply for jobs and it is really easy. I graduated in December of 2019 and then I got my first job by, you know, February. I, I think I got hired at the end of J January and I started working on um, in the beginning of February. Um, so right now I work at an urgent care and I actually prefer working at an urgent care anyways A lot of people just want to work at a hospital because you get paid the most at a hospital You get paid like the least I guess at an urgent care or outpatient setting Don't be discouraged if after you go To school and everything you don't get a full-time job at a hospital because working at an urgent care gives you experience working at an outpatient clinic gives you experience um, just working anywhere gives you good experience. Um, and you may find that you don't even want to work at a hospital. I really like the field of x-ray and radiology technology, and I hope you guys um, found this video educational and it gave you a lot of information. And I hope that you make it through and become x-ray techs. I feel like that would be so cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. Bye.